and it is my pleasure to introduce the first speaker, Gigel Militaro from University of Bucharest and Simeon Stolo University of Mathematics of the Romanian Academy of Sciences. Uh, and he's delivering a talk entitled The Set Theoretic Young Buckter Equations, Kimura Semigroups, and Functional Graphs. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to organizers uh, for the opportunity to have a talk here. Do you hear me? I think it's everything okay, no? Yes, we can hear you uh, with your presentation. So if you wish thank you, you very may much. make your presentation full screen, but otherwise, if it's okay, let's let it be like uh, this. Full screen, it's okay, no? Like this? It's better now. I think it would be that it's better, of course, it's uh, more convenient to participants to see your presentation. Okay. So uh, my talk is based on a joint work with Anna Agore and Alexandru Kirvasitu, and the paper will be, you, you can find it on our hive. And uh, the plan of the talk is the following. First, I recall uh, an open problem put it by Dreamford 33 years ago. And then I recall so, some elementary stuff about numbers, uh, graph theory, and Kimura semigroups. Then uh, the main part of my talk will consist on set theoretical Frobenius separability equation, which is a special, a special class of solution of the Young Baxter equation. Uh, the classification results related to this equation and if I have time, hopefully I will have time about the automorphism group of such solutions. For some notation, all the time during my talk, X will be a set and the flip map will be denoted by tau. We are going all the time to, to, work, to deal with the map R from X time X to itself. And there are some usual notation uh, related to this young Baxter equation. I think everybody know until now what young Baxter equation means. R12, R2, R23, and so on, R13. R12 is just R times identity. As I said, uh, such a map R on X times X to itself is called the solution of the set theoretical young Baxter equation, respectively the braid equation, if this equation holds as maps from x times x times x to itself under the usual composition. So it is just composition of maps. And for the braid equation, it's the other one. This equation. So x is a set and r is a map. My talk will be about one set, x, one map, r, and one equation. Just elementary problem. And the problem was put it 33 years ago by Dreamfeld in, top, um, in the, exactly in the year when he got the Fields Medal, and consists of the following. Given a finite set X, even he didn't mention to be finite, describe and classify all set theoretical solution of the Young-Baxter equation on the set X. The problem, you can find it in this paper, published two years later, and this is the last section when Dreamfeld puts several problems, unsolved problem in quantum groups. And the problem is the last one in the last section nine, I guess, if I remember well. As a remark, a map R is a solution of the young Baxter equation if and only if flip R, tau is all the, all the time the flip map, is a solution of the braid equation. So. In, in if you want to approach the Dreamfeld problem, we just we can focus to study only just one of the equations. It's enough. Now, as you said, the problem is very elementary. So let's let's try to solve it. Uh, such a map R for such a map R from x times this thing itself, you can you, we can write it in this natural way in the unique way for two binary operation on, on x dot and star which are multiplication okay then it's an elementary exercise to prove that such a map r is a solution of the young baxter equation if and only if these three types of equation are holds for any x y and z in x see uh, 
uh, if you look at uh, the equation one and three, said that the multiplication dot, the first multiplication from here, it's almost associative, but it's not associative. Here appears this uh, term that makes the first multiplication very far away from the associative, and the same, the same discussion with this one, with this term. Now, uh, such a triple consisting of a set x and two multiplication on it, dot and star, satisfying these axioms of this compatibility condition or these identities, we called a young Baxter B magma following set of Grotendieck terminology, or a, you can see that we can view it as a set theoretical non associative algebra. You can call set article young Baxter non associative algebra. And the problem of, of Dreamfield using this terminology, so one, one more, the set, uh, the, the variety of these uh, solutions is very ample. And if it was talked before, uh, before about universal algebra, make the, the class of solution of the young Baxter equation a variety of algebras in the sense of universal algebras. And the Dreamfall problem can be restated as follows. For a given set X, describe and classify up to an isomorphism all young Baxter B magmas that can be defined on the set X. If you look at the, once again, as a compatibility condition, the problem seems to be hopeless. So, we have to limit ourselves to study only certain class of solutions, which are probably friendly or friendlier to classification or to give some structure theory for them. And that we are going to do here. Uh, there is a vast young Baxter literature on these equations at the level of set, as Dreamfall formulated 33 years ago. The story starts with these two papers published in Duke Journal by Ettingov, Schreller, and Soloviev in 99 and Luyan and Zhu. And then an inflation of papers was, addressed, uh, was written on the subject, hundreds, maybe more than 1,000. And probably the last one is this one. So we just, we just, we can Google it, quantum young Baxter equation, and you'll see a lot of papers. The abstract of my talk consists of the following. We'll prove first that a certain class of solution of the Braid equation, as I said before, Braid and quantum young Baxter equation are equivalent. So a certain class of solution uh, that we call for Frobenius, Frobenius separability type, it's equivalent to a certain category of semi-group study introduced and studied by Kimura 70 years ago, which called it pointed Kimura semi-groups. The second step, a lot of uh, uh, special class of solution of FS type that were intensively studied in, uh, in the literature, involutive, uh, non-degenerate, unitary, that people in quantum groups are interested, uh, non-degenerate are fully classified and they will be fully classified by very special numbers from number theory. And if I have time, and I hope that I uh, have some time, the symmetry group of this uh, solution is also described. Okay, let's go to remember some elementary numbers. Everybody knows the famous Euler partition number. We denote it by P of N. And for us, is the number of all conjugate classes on the permutation group S sign. It was introduced and studied for the first time by Euler, and 200 years after Euler, Davis introduced another number, 1953, which we call we call it Davis number and denoted by D of n. And by definition, this D of n is a number of all conjugate classes of all self maps from the set one dot n to itself. In combinatorics, this number is also known as mapping typing or ma mapping types or mapping patterns of N. And uh, 
you see is very related to the Euler partition number, but only here you take only self maps, not bijective like here. Okay. The first formula of computation was given by Davis and rediscovered later on by De Bruijn, which gives exactly the formula how to compute this number. Actually, this formula is the one that given by De Bruijn. Uh, it's a finite sum here, yeah, because of summation is over sequences satisfying this property. And uh, De Bruijn compute by hand, I guess, the first 15 values has a very exposed glow, if you see, and that generally mark the Davis number is much more big, bigger than the Euler partition number. Okay, let's make a, now a small connection between this number and graph theory. Uh, also, 60 years ago, Harari introduced something that he called fun functional degraphs. Here we change a little bit the definition of Harari and for a cell function f, we introduce a graph, a directed graph, gamma f, it's the graph associated to f, having uh, x as a vertex set, yeah, it's f is from x to x, and then an h from x to y, exactly when y is equal to f of x, and uh, x and y are different. So this uh, graph gamma f is basically the usual graph associated directly graph associated to f minus the diagonal you see we put it here now as i said this is just a, a simple change of the definition of the, given by harari and the harari fun fu functional degraph are exactly the, those gamma f for which f has no fixed point now, two such graphs, directed graph, gamma f and gamma g associated to two to self-map f and g are isomorphic in the sense of graph theory, if and only if f and g are conjugate. So, from here we obtain easily that the Davis number d of n is exactly the number of isomorphism classes of all functional graphs, the graphs, directed graph, gamma f on n vertices. This will be appear later on in the classification of a certain type of solution. Uh, once you have graphs, we, we could ask when such a graph is connected. So for a self-map, it's a theorem here, which probably is very well known, but it's very hard to find out. So uh, for uh, uh, such a fun functional the graph gamma f is connected, in the usual sense of the graph theory, uh, that means connected as an undirected graph, if and only if there are two elementary conditions, these are just elementary in one. And uh, what I mean, what uh, you use more is this one. There is this no non-trivial f invariant partition of x, which means a partition satisfied, there is uh, a partition that is invariant to f. For such a self map, as such a self map satisfying one of the above equivalent condition, we call it connected. And uh, the number of all conjugacy classes of all connected self maps from one to n to in self, we call the Harari number of n and denoted by C of n. He is, this number was introduced in the paper of Harari in a, in, uh, in a, it appears as a sum of three numbers in, in his paper. So we denote it by C from connected here. And this sequence, you'll, you can find it on this um, Academy of Integrals. So, well, first and value are computing. So like this, a very a slow, slow increase. So the other number, Harari number, the number of all conjugacies classes of all connected self maps. And now we go back to semi groups. Kimura introduced and study a class of semi groups that we call Kimura semi groups, which are semi groups satisfying this interesting relation. So in the multiplication, uh, of a Kimura semigroup, the middle th term are the middle term uh, disappear. They are killed. They disappear. Okay. 
Uh, he introduced this class of semi-groups, and uh, uh, Kimura has several in a paper of Pacific journals published. Uh, he has several uh, uh, structured theorem related to this class of semi-groups. Uh, he introduced as a generalization of what was called before and well known as the regular semi-groups, which are semi-groups satisfying these compatibility conditions. It's much simpler than this one. And any rectangular semigroup is a Kimura semigroup, semi -group, but not, not the converse. They are proper generalization. And the basic example of a Kimura semigroup is so called the rectangular band of two sets. For any two, you know, two sets A and B, A times B is a Kimura semigroup, it actually is a rectangular semigroup. With this multiplication, you see here we call we keep only the first and the last term. Okay. Now let's go to the what we are the, uh, to our job. As I said, we are going to study, because the problem of Dreamfold is wide open and quite difficult, to a certain class of solution. And that we call Frobenius separability equation. As at the beginning of my talk, all the time x is a set and a map r is from x times x to itself. And the, such a map is called the solution of the set theoretical Frobenius separability equation, if and only if this thing, this equation holds also as maps from x times x times x to itself. And such a map will be called an FS solution of x and will be denoted by this, exactly as in young Baxter case, two, multi two multiplication, one's denoted by dot and the other one by star, or uh, keeping only left uh, left multiplication by x here is left or right multiplication by uh, y okay okay this equation appeared first time in a paper of Bader, Fong and Stalin uh, on a paper concerning uh, Hopf algebras and Frobenius algebras it appears in uh, one or one or two lemmas and uh, a study, um, uh, I studied in, with two friends and three years later, Steph Canapel and Bob Daniel. And uh, we put that name for Benius separability because that equation is very close, very much related to two classes of associative algebra, from Benius one and separable one. All the details are given here. Now, a key remark from the paper, BFS paper, is that any solution of the Frobenius separability equation is also a solution of the Braid equation. So this class of solution, uh, it's a special class of solution of the Braid equation. If you put, if you take the switch map of the quantum and Baxter equation. And our goal is to describe and to classify all solution of the FS equation on a given set. On a given set x, and that we are going to do. The basic example is the following: If you take a, a map f uh, from x to itself, then this map is a solution of the FS equation. It's an FS solution. So here is just the flip map, and then apply, uh, first applies the flip map, and then identity times f. Converse, conversely, what is more interested is the following. And it gives a structure of all non-degenerate solutions. If you have a set X and the self map R, then R is a left non-degenerate FS solution on X, if and only if there exists a map F from X to X such that R is the above FS. Non-degenerate is a class of solution introduced by Ettingov and his authors. And that means non-degenerate means that all left multiplication are bijective or X with the first multiplication dot, it's a left quasi group. For the right non-degenerate case, R is a right non-degenerate solution of the FS equation, if and only if exactly as above, but this time F has to be bijective now. In particular, any Right on the generate is also left on the generate. So this is a basic example on the converse. Now, a second example. 
we call it, I call it the genetic example, take two set A and B, and a self map omega from B to B. Instead of e, the set X, I take A times, A times B. Then this map L omega, omega is above now, given by this interesting formula is an FS solution on A times B. So you see what I did here, just permute this guy and apply an omega here. Conversely, it's something that we call the structure of subjective FS solution, even the, the theorem is more general. If you take a map R on X times X to itself, an uh, FS solution on X such that uh, pi one composed with R is subjective. This is a, project, a projection on the first component. Then there exist two sets A and B non-empty and the self map on B such that the solution R on X of the FS equation, it is isomorphic. It's a category, uh, the category of all solution. Yeah, it's like, I didn't write here. It is isomorphic to the above solution. So any, uh, any FS solution satisfies this condition is as above, appear as above. Behind, uh, behind the above two theorems, are uh, even you don't see it now, are exactly what I said before, Kimura semi-flux. To make this clear, we have a small proposition saying that uh, a self-map R written as, we, uh, as a beginning, is a solution of a FS equation if and only if some axiom holds. And the first, the first axiom says that the set X with the first multiplication is a Kimura semi -group. And there are another uh, axiom that are much more simplifi simplified that and friendly to classification than, uh, than the one that appear in, in uh, the Drinkle problem. Okay, so this class of solution is very friendly to classification. So a Kimura semigroup are naturally. Now, one more definition. Um, for a Kimura semigroup, a map theta from uh, X to itself is called the quasi endomorphism of X, if and only if this relation holds. Yeah. And as a basic example, any endomorphism of the Kimura semigroup is a quasi endomorphism. Maybe the term quasi is not good choice. Maybe it was generalized endomorphism or something like this. But not only endomorphisms, left at X module map also gives a quasi endomorphism. So there are a lot. Now, the structure of all FS solution is given by this theorem that say that uh, a map R is an FS solution on a set X, if and only if X with the first multiplication is a Kimura semigroup, and the structure of the Kimura semigroup we know from Kimura work, and there exists a, 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 a quasi endomorphism theta on X such that the map R is given by this nice formula. So here you see the second multiplication disappear. And instead of it appear uh, quasi endomorphism of the first uh, Kimura semigroup. If you prefer, and I prefer the categorical language, means that the category of all solution of the Frobenius separability equation, and we denote it by this, it's equivalent to the category of all pointed Kimura semigroups, where here objects are peers consisting of a Kimura semigroup and a quasi endomorphism. And this theorem say that this is an equivalence of category. Okay, dokim. There are a lot of application of this uh, of this three starter theorem that I have until now, and this application are referred to uh, a lot of class of solution that are studied in, in the theory of young Baxter equation. The first one I already recall was introduced in the editing of paper. What means lab, lab non degenerate and non, non degenerate? A map R is called unitary if it's bijective and uh, its inverse is given by L21. This appears in the default paper and 
people in quantum groups are interested in unitary solution. Involutive is what you expect to be. Another definition from this paper is such a, of indecomposable solution. First, a map, a map L is decomposable, is called decomposable if there exists a non trivial partition satisfying this condition. And indecomposable if it's not decomposable. The terminology in decomposable here is a little bit uh, uh, controversial, I could say. I don't like it. I, I think the, the better term should be connected. And you'll see later on this why. Because in the composable, usually in category means something else. Uh, but it keeps the terminology because it was interesting used under in the composable solution. Uh, so uh, classification is always there are, I think, two or three theorems. Uh, for a finite set X with N, uh, of order N, the number of isomorphous classes, uh, the number of isomorphous classes, I, from now on, I will say only the number of, okay? Uh, the number of all left, respectively right, non degenerate FS solution on X, it's equal to the Davis number that we introduced, that we called before, respectively the Euler partition number. Second result, the number of all involutive solution on X, it's tau of n, which is the number of divisors of n. The number of all idempotent FS solution of x is, again, Euler partition number, but they are different here. Idempotent solution, they are not right on the generate, except the trivial case, identity. For unitary solutions, the number of all unitary solutions is this one number of divisor plus another one. Concerning uh, uh, the general classification for, usually in young Baxter literature, uh, they take only bijective solutions. So if you denote by FSB the number of all isomorphic classes of all bijective FS solution, then it is given by this formula. The number of all bijective FS solution, it's given by this nice formula involving Euler partition number. And from here, of course, using the uh, Möbius function, you can <laughs> obtain a, such a formula between of PDN in terms of this special class of solution of the Braid equation. In the composable solution, the one that are led non-degenerate are classified by the Harari number that we introduced before as connected map, okay, CN. And for those that are right non-degenerate, we have, we have a rigidity type theorem. There is only one. If it is a finite set, there is only one right non-degenerate in the composable FS solution of, it, of on X, namely the one associated to a cycle of lens, maximum lens. N. Okay, something about automorphism group. I still have some uh, to do. If, if you have a map R such that P1R is surjective and the solution of the automorphism group of um, X, then there exist two non-empty sets A and B and self map omega such that the symmetry group of the automorphism group of the solution, it is isomorphic to the permutation group sigma A. This is a permutation group of, on the set A. Uh, times the automorphism group of omega, which is the automorphism group of the graph gamma omega that we constructed. And by definition, this is this guy. The map, the permutation on the set B that commute with omega. In the paper, there are a lot of theorems and we fully classify the groups that are of this form. I, I did not include it here because I know that I don't have time. And uh, here I put only one result, the last one, that says that any group G can be realized as a split quotient of the automorphism group of a Kimura semigroup with a kernel isomorphic to a, pro to a product of a full permutation group. We, we are uh, study a lot of this because uh, a lot of results about these groups because we are interested 
in to, to answer the following question, and I didn't, that any group G is isomorphic to the automorphism group of a certain FS solution of aesthetics, and the problem we, we didn't solve it. So it's still open. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Milisaro, for your talk. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, but if you have participants have questions, they can ask in chat or contact you privately. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you very much. Sorry for, for, the for your talk. Thank you very much.